Stone and such a wonderful, wonderful community facility that this is. And I'm honored that I was invited to come up here and be part of it. So thank you very much. Um, I'm David Andrews, in case you don't know, from WILX TV 10. So uh, we've got the TV camera out there. You'll see this on the 6 o'clock news tonight. Uh, you've been listening to the beautiful sounds of Dorothea Fields on the harp. So Dorothea, thank you very much. It's just uh, beautiful on a Saturday morning to hear that and to be in this bird sanctuary behind us. What a, what a wonderful uh, nook this is in this great facility. It's amazing to think that a hundred years ago, women of the Child Conservation Club established this library in a room at People's Church, something I did not know, uh, with just $26 and two boxes of books. $26 and two boxes of books, a hundred years ago, and look what it's grown into. Quite amazing. Uh, it's a wonder to see how this facility has blossomed in that 100 years to be called the Community Classroom of East Lansing for all the resources that it does provide to the community. Our first speaker this morning will be Kristen Shelley, the East Lansing Public Library Director for the past 12 years. Let's give a warm welcome to Kristen. And David is taller than I am, so I'm gonna move this so you can hear me. Good morning, and welcome to the East Lansing Public Library's 100th birthday party. Um, it is truly wonderful to celebrate 100 years of success, and I have a list of people I need to thank before I get into my official remarks. But Representative Penelope Cernoglu, she's the 75th District State Representative, and Representative Julie Brixey from the 73rd District State Representative, Senator Debbie Stabenow gave us a certificate. So it's over here, we're gonna have that framed. Senator Gary Peters uh, provided a congratulatory video, which will be playing on a loop uh, towards the big windows. The East Lansing Fire Chief Don Carson, who um, the East Lansing Fire Department is also 100 years old this year. Yay. <laughs> And Interim City Manager Randy Talaferro, which I'm not sure if he's arrived yet, but um, he's on his way uh, from a youth basketball game, so he might be a little bit late. Randy Riley, State Librarian and East Lansing resident. Robin Pizzo, for Director of Education at WKAR, which is also celebrating its 100th birthday this year. <laughs> Poet, author, and resident Cindy Hunter Morgan, Dorothea Fields on the harp, David Andrews, who just introduced himself, Pete Martins of Martins Print Works for um, designing the gorgeous print of the library and the postcards to commem commemorate today's celebration. If you haven't gotten a postcard, staff are handing them out. Roy Saper of Saper Galleries for framing in record time our print, which is hanging over by the copier. Face painting by Hillary, balloon animal artists Karen Miller and Nancy Woodruff, and blue, balloon artists, so you saw the arch of balloons um, as you walked in and then over um, by the teen area, uh, Karen Miller, or Lolly Bean, Tabitha Engelhart. So, and RetroDuck.com for our new t-shirts, so we got the staff are wearing bright colored t-shirts. And without a doubt, the East Lansing Public Library staff, because without all of them, none of this would happen. A hundred years ago and today. They deserve all your thanks. And one person who's not gonna like that I'm gonna call her out, but who organized all this and often organizes our parties is Phyllis Toady. So as I said, it is wonderful to celebrate 100 years of the library. 
Looking back at what was going on in the country in 1923, it was the Roaring Twenties, World War I was over, the 20th century was still very young, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics was formed, also known as the USSR, Time Magazine made its debut, and U.S. unemployment was nearly ended. And a group of dedicated women organized the first East Lansing Public Library in a small room at the People's Church. These women raised money for books by selling hot lunches at the new stadium at the Michigan State College. They made $145. They were tenacious and community oriented. Fast forward 100 years and we know the USSR is no longer. Time Magazine is struggling. They are now not a weekly. They are barely a monthly. Um, they're struggling to stay relevant and they had, have cut hundreds of jobs. And unemployment has soared and dipped over the years. However, the East Lansing Public Library is still vibrant. And the friends of the East Lansing Public Library are still selling books to raise much needed funding for the library. So how, ha yeah, give them a round of applause. So how has the library made it for 100 years? Especially with a model that most business people said was failing, would fail from the get-go because uh, we give away our product and we expect people to bring it back. <laughs> Not many businesses work that way. ELPL is here because the most important parts of our business model are the staff, information, and the community. Over the past 100 years, we have never strayed from providing information and service to the community. The form in which we provide information has changed a lot over the years, and today is changing even faster and faster. We have grown and been through many trying times. Many thought that we would not survive Google, Amazon, the internet, and the digital age, but here we are. <laughs> And this harkens back to the community and our mission to being open to all, serving and providing a space for people to gather and to learn, no matter your zip code and no matter your status. However, it is important to note that in the past few years, libraries and library materials on our shelves have been challenged more and with more vitriol than I have ever seen. And I have been a professional librarian for almost 35 years. There are well-organized groups who are challenging books at record numbers, as well as programs and displays. And across the country, there is legislation being passed on what books can be accessed and purchased for libraries. In West Michigan, voters voted twice to defund the Patmos Library because LGBTQIA plus and books by and about BIPOC people were on their shelves. So the struggles continue and yet libraries persevere. Alice Walker once shared at a library conference, libraries are for teaching the expansion of being. Everyone has a share of what is available at the library and libraries are the root of fairness. The East Lansing Public Library will look different a hundred years from now, but I am betting it will be still be a community centric an information hub, and continue to work toward teaching the expansion of being. Thank you. Kristen, well said. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to welcome to the podium a couple of our state representatives. We have Penelope Cernoglu from the 75th State District and Julie Brooksy from the 73rd State District. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, I just wanted to come to present some tributes uh, to, let's see, first we have 
the East Lansing Fire Department that is also turning 100 years today. Um, so is there someone from the East Lansing Fire Department? May I give this to you? Hi. So I just want to say that, you know, we are so fortunate in our community to have um, our fire department here. And the good work that you do every day is so important to everyone in the community. Um, I won't read the whole tribute, it's a bit long, but I think we all, we all know um, how important this service is to us. Um, so I just wanted to uh, present you with this tribute and thank you for your work. We also have a tribute um, from the state of Michigan for WKAR um, Public Media. Uh, is there someone I can give this one to or representing WKAR? <laughs> Hello and welcome. And um, I understand you're also 100 years. Yes. And that is just so amazing. Um, WKAR is just such a valuable resource, you know, to all of us. Uh, my daughter grew up on Daniel Tiger. And <laughs> it, it's just... So amazing to have you in our community. So thank you so much for all of your work. Thank you. And then last but not least, of course, the East Lansing Public Library. Um, you know, I, I think we all share a love for reading and books and access to information. Uh, my mom was a librarian, so I grew up reading books, and I can't tell you how important reading is to me. Um, and I've passed that on to my daughter right now. She is always carrying a book with her. And the, the work that the library does is just, it, it's so important. And, and we all know that here. And my daughter has grown up coming to the library and the toddler programs. And we are just so, so fortunate as a community to have this resource. Um, so thank you and um, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you, State Representative Sir Noglu. Appreciate that. I tell you what, with all these uh, things turning 100, how many of you fe are feeling young out there today? <laughs> pretty good, right? <laughs> I know. It's pretty good. I'd like to now welcome uh, Eric Keller. He's representing U Michigan, U.S. Senator Gary Peters. Well, thank you. And this is just a magnificent turnout. Uh, you know, I always like it when I show up to the library and I can't find a parking spot. Who's with me? Right. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm U.S. Senator Gary Peters, regional director. I'm an East Lansing resident. Uh, and actually, Senator Peters was in town yesterday. Uh, he actually visited uh, the East Lansing Fire Department, uh, highlighting uh, fire grants that, that he's pushing for in Congress and, and grants that the, the fire department uh, has actually been able to take advantage of in, in recent, you know, in the last couple of years. Um, he's also on campus yesterday as well. So uh, even though he's not able to be here today, as, as was noted, he did pre-record. Thank you for the clap. That's so nice. Uh, he, he did pre-record a video that's up front. So, you know, I'm not going to reiterate the things he said. He can say it more eloquently than myself, but, you know, Talking about 100 years, uh, you know, I, I live in Chesterfield Hills. My house is almost 100 years old, so I know how old 100 years is because I have to do a lot of work on that house on a regular basis. Um, you know, in, in Eichinger Park right there was the first park, and that was, that was uh, just over 100 years ago when that, the first park in the city of East Lansing was dedicated. Um, so thinking that far... Uh, you know, in, into our history and what that looked like and creating something new, new had to be really challenging. But, you know, one thing that it did was create a space for community to come together uh, and share information, share knowledge, and, and, and that's something that East Lansing Public Library has done for a hundred years now, a century, is brought people together. And I think it's really important to take a second think through what the last hundred years has looked like, uh, pay tribute to the people who have made that a reality. 
Uh, but I think today is just as important to think about the next hundred years and the fact that we're all here today gathering as community uh, to make the next hundred years of the East Lansing Public Library even more powerful and impactful. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for having me. I'll give it back to you. All right. Thank you. Eric, thank you. I'd now like to welcome to the podium East Lansing Interim City Manager, Randy Telefaro, to share a few words. Good afternoon. Uh, it's good to see everyone, and thank you for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here because I get to celebrate two of my favorite things that are uh, celebrating 100 years, a fire department. For those of you that don't know, I was in the fire service for about 34 years total, and the library here. The library um, started 100 years ago, affiliated with the People's Church uh, by a group of ladies that saw a need and addressed it. And I think that all the great ideals come from women. I've learned that throughout my life. <laughs> I really, you know, this is, um, for me, it means a lot because I think there are gifts you give to children that gifts and experiences that become so meaningful uh, for them throughout their life. And I, um, I share a love of books. I'm an avid reader, listener of books. And I do that with my children and grandchildren. And I remember uh, my granddaughter, who's now a sophomore at George Washington University, she and I would ride um, back and forth to Indianapolis while I would um, take her to see her dad when um, her, her mom and dad separated. And we formed this book club of sorts, and we would read books and discuss them all the way there and back. Um, the last one we read was Tahanasi Coast Between the World and Me. I think I got the title right. But yeah, and it was a wonderful book. And we would have so many discussions about not only that book, but every book along the way. And I remember as a child just um, getting a love of books from my mom. And, you know, the first one I can really remember is Moby Dick. And I saw they were going to be making a movie out of that, and I can't wait to see it uh, recently. But, you know, it was always an important part of my life. And I think... Um, if you share that with your children and young people, um, it took me to worlds that I never knew existed. And it still does. And I love reading and I can so appreciate what Kristen said about, you know, um, I can't even identify with people who want to, um, to take books out and not give you that opportunity to learn and see and listen to different perspectives. So don't have to agree with them. But I, I think having that exposure is so important, and I'm glad that our, our library director thinks that's important as well. And I know that I've worked with Chris in a long time, and I can tell you um, I love the discussions we have. I love her leadership, and she's a phenomenal person, and we're so lucky to have her. I still think that whenever you go to a community, if you want to know what that community values, start by going to a library. And East Lansing Public Library is a, it is that, that light in the darkness. It is a place where you can come and learn so much and have, uh, have so many experiences. And I am just fortunate to be here standing in this moment as a representative of the city um, to express our gratitude for all that uh, we have here and all that this community has supported. We thank you so much for that support. Thank you, Kristen, as you continue to, to lead the way. I know there have been difficult times and difficult issues. And, you know, one of the other things I learned over time is that, and I, I can't remember if someone told me or read it to me or I saw it as a meme or something, but it was, you know, that you never want to be judged by the worst moment of your life or the best moment of your life. What I do know is I've had so many more great moments with Kristen so many great moments from Christian that I've ever seen bad moments. So I, I think she's a friend, she's an ally, and I, you know, advocate for her a hundred percent. I think that I thank you for coming out, and I'm so 
they didn't give me a time, so I probably gone well past my time. Thank you all. I have to run that granddaughter I was talking about. She's coming in for spring break. And I'm trying to catch her and my other grandchildren. And, uh, so I really hate to just pop in and pop out. But um, I wish you all uh, well for the rest of the day. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Telefaro. I don't know if you've all seen this uh, beautiful print, the East Lansing Public Library, the community's classroom, 100 years, 1923 to 2023. This beautiful print is the work of Pete Martins. Pete, where are you? Right here. Pete, thank you very much. This is, this is beautiful. I was commenting on this when I came and I said, who did the print, Phyllis? And Pete Martins. And she had a nice story that went along with that. Uh, so I'm glad she finally convinced you to uh, get on board with this because it, it turned out wonderfully. Thank you. I'd like to now welcome Randy Riley, the state librarian and East Lansing resident, to the podium. Randy? Thank you. Uh, one of the best things I get to do is come to events like this. Um, I'm used so I always lose to balloon animals and face painting. They draw the crowds. I'm used to that. Uh, but this one is uh, a, a even uh, a better because it's uh, just down the road from where I live. Uh, we've been a resident here in the East Lansing for over 30 years. And as state librarian, I can tell you the state of Michigan is blessed with a number of, of, of outstanding libraries. Um, but as residents of East Lansing, uh, you should feel uh, proud to know that East Lansing Public Library is one of the best in the state. It's a top tier library, and, and that does not happen by accident. Uh, you know, great public libraries, like I said, do not happen by accident. Um, East Lansing is blessed with a, a great board, uh, good administration, a outstanding staff, and uh, they deserve all kinds of recognition. But successful, effective public libraries happen because of all of you and your support and, and the fact that you come and you remain down the library, you see the library as, yes, a place to get books, but also as a place to gather and share ideas. And that is the way libraries impact and change communities. And I'm certain that East Lansing will continue to do that. Um, my children used to come down to this library. Um, it's a special place, and, and we are all blessed to have a special place like this because uh, not every community does have the resources or the facilities that we have here in East Lansing. So I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to be part of the celebration and congratulate all of you on a job well done. Thanks. All right, thank you, Mr. Riley. We appreciate it. Robin Pizzo is the Director of Education at WKAR. She's not only here to say a few words today, but she has brought books, stickers, members of the curious crew with her, and look for Robin at a table near the parent-teacher collection close to the children's area uh, during the event today. But right now, we're going to have Robin come up and share a few words. Welcome. Thank you. I, I was going to wear my Curious Crew t-shirt, but I thought 100 years, you got to sparkle a little bit for 100 years, right? I just want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, East Lansing Library, for inviting me, Phyllis. Thank you so much for reaching out to me to celebrate this auspicious, honorable occasion of 100 years at East Lansing Public Library. It's such an honor to be here, and I really appreciate being up here with dignitaries and uh, community celebrities and the like. Um, this is such a special moment for me. Um, I grew up uh, partially in foster care, but there were four places that changed my life, and that was the church, the library, PBS, and school. And I've loved all of those places so much, and they were able to transition me through some really tough times for a very long time. 
um, that I'm still a part of them. I still feel all of the awe and uh, aspiration and inspiration when I walk into the library doors. I feel that same way when I walk into the doors at my job at WKAR, PBS. And so I wanted to share a little bit of that with you all in a little bit of a section. And I have a little special something at the very end. So as stated, I'm Robin Pizzo, Director of Education at WKAR Public Media. Um, we're located on and powered by the beautiful campus of Michigan State University. We're a dual licensee um, station, both broadcast and radio, and I'm honored to be here with even Jody Noel, our wonderful classical radio host and on-air talent. Uh, the East Lansing Library, WKAR, our neighbors, and together have stood strong to serve all in our community for 100 years. It's a very special coincidence that we celebrate this with you. This 100 years of service um, alongside and committed to continue to empower, inspire, and educate for 100 more years. I truly believe that. I have a special responsibility to families and children as we engage viewers with our beloved PBS Kids programming and our local programming such as Curious Crew and WKA, our family resources and educational support. I'm a proud PBS kid for life and I hope all of you our proud PBS kids. How many of you grew up on some PBS kid programming? We can start naming them. Daniel Tiger, Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood, Sesame Street, Electric Company, and the list goes on and on. The library has shaped me in a profound way. And I thought I'd share a poem with you all as I fell in love with poetry as a five-year-old sitting among the stacks of the library um, in my community in Detroit, Michigan. As a kid of the 80s, the word dope, D-O-P-E, meant very good, cool, lit, as kids say today. So I wanted to share a poetry piece to um, honor the library as being dope, the best, okay? The library is dope, dope, dope. More than a place filled with books, even though that's dope. More than a place of magic woven through time, space, culture, and place. Yeah, that's dope too. More than open arms inviting each to discover me, you, them, us all. That's truly dope. More than shelter from cold nights and heat wave days, more than a refuge guiding, leading, offering knowledge, more than protection from the world's wrongs, more than adventures, great and small, light and love, mice to men, more than homework help, test prep talks, speeches, recitations, campaigns, a mother's gift to her children. It's a refuge, more than books and boards and things to check out and return, grab and go, online, audible, ebooks, and maker spaces. A saving grace, all very, very dope. The library is provident, profound, prolific, and powerful. A beacon of hope, a wellspring of joy, a gift of life. East Lansing Library is dope. All right, thank you, Ms. Robin. Last but certainly not least, please welcome Cindy Hunter. Cindy Hunter Morgan, a local poet, longtime treasured ELPL patron. Cindy has written a poem in honor of this occasion. So let's welcome Cindy Hunter Morgan. Hello, and what a day. This is great. I was, um, in, when I sat down to write this, I was thinking, how am I going to fit all the history of the East Lansing Public Library into a poem? And um, I have not. I realized that would be a filibuster, not a poem. So, um, <clears throat> 
hours. In the corner of the children's section, a boy is building a city out of blocks. First a library, he tells his mother, then a fire station. And I can't help worrying about the order, then can't help thinking the boy's got it right. His sister is on the floor, flipping through seven centuries of architecture, pages he consults occasionally for inspiration, though what he really wants is right here in the East Lansing Public Library, a bay window for the back of his building. Just like ours here, he says. Ours, he says, having learned already that this library is his mother's, his sister's, his. Without taking her eyes from a picture of a 15th century turret in a book spread on the floor like a welcome mat, his sister says, you could print one in the maker's studio. The boy turns to his mother, whose mind I cannot read, and my mind wanders to William Stafford, who might be waiting over in the 811s. Your job is to find out what the world is trying to be. William Stafford, dead in 1993. But no, quite possibly alive here in the East Lansing Public Library. Or if not, then available through Melcat, which is to say, still alive by way of this library. You can imagine one too, says the mother. And I realize I have eavesdropped too long on this young family. I wander over to the boy's bay window to sort through what I'll take home and what I'll leave. But there in the boy's window, also my window, a man bends before a telescope, watching a red-bellied woodpecker in the woods behind the library. He shares this when he looks up and offers also to share the scope, the view, the woods, the bird. Look how much we can have if we agree to share, I think. And so I watch the bird peck for insects while someone behind me types on a laptop, her fingers on the keyboard, an almost synchronized audio track. I thank the man for sharing, then sort my books and check them out, noting as I leave that someone is borrowing a pair of sawhorses and a 13-foot ladder. We are moving ever closer to the splendor of ancient Alexandria, I think, even as the 3D printers, little robots, click, beep, and whir outside the meeting room. Somewhere in East Lansing, a boy lives with the understanding he has a library. Somewhere, a girl has seven centuries of architecture inside her head. I walk home rich with stories and birds and hope. Later, on my green couch, I open my book. Mine while I hold it. Mine while I read it. And yours, too, if you want it someday. The cellophane cover crinkles like a little flame kindled. Thank you. Cindy, beautiful words. Cindy Hunter Morgan, thank you for that. Thank you all for the wonderful comments this morning. It's easy to see why this uh, library is a treasured part of our community. So please enjoy all the activities that are here today, the face painting. I'm intrigued by the face painting. If somebody dares me to get my face painted, I dare you! <laughs> I, think, I think I just might. You know, I missed out on that when I was a kid, and I see these kids run, I'm like, I really want to do that, you know? I'm 62, I think I can, I think I can afford to get my face painted. Maybe it's time, right? Uh, so we've got the balloon animals, we've got the maker studio, cookies, and of course cake. And what would a celebration be without cake? So when Phyllis asked me to come here, she, she sent me an email, and she said, could you MC the event? Great. And it got down a, a paragraph or two, could you also make us a cake? And she follows me on Facebook, and every weekend I make cakes. 
and I'd take a picture and put it on Facebook. And so I thought, yeah, I could probably do that. For a hundred year birthday, I'll make a cake. So I made a cake over here. Uh, it keeps me off the streets on the weekends, gives me something to do, takes my mind off all the bad things I talk about during the week. Uh, so that's what I do. I make cakes and I decorate them, and we're going to raffle this one off. So come up here. We've got some sheets of paper, some pens. Put your name, your phone number on there. And here in a little while, we will pick a name out, take the cake home. Now, because I had to carve this cake, it's in the shape of an open book, I got to eat the carved pieces. <laughs> and if I do say so myself, it's good cake. <laughs> it's, it's a chocolate cake with uh, vanilla buttercream icing, homemade. So there it is. And I even made a little bookworm for the top. So there you have it. So. Uh, Enjoy. One lucky family will go home with that. So enjoy your time at the library. Happy 100 years old to the East Lansing Public Library. Thank you all.